Thank you for coming this afternoon as we gather this afternoon to celebrate the life of this blessed family man. Husband, father, and brother. Shelby Charles Epperson. And also to worship the Lord, the author and the giver of all life. He is the priceless gem of the Christian hope. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the strength for which the race that we run and the goal to which that we run to. Our hope today comes from the living word of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. We can take comfort from his word as he began to spoke, speak to Mary and Martha who had just lost one of their loved ones, their brother. In John the 11th chapter, verses 25 and following, the Lord Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life even though they may die. And everyone who has life and commits themselves unto me in faith, they shall never die. For everyone who believes in me may have eternal and everlasting life. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we're able to come before you. We thank you for the provision and the promise of everlasting life in the Lord Jesus Christ. We say with Job, who spoke in the time of the loss of his loved ones, that we know that our Redeemer lives and that he will stand at last upon this earth and after our awakening, he will raise us up and we shall see our God and our eyes shall behold him who is our friend. Our lives today, Lord, are in you, and we are so thankful. Thank you for every blessing. Thank you for each and every one that has attended here today in this great family, Lord, as we celebrate Shelby's life today. Lord, we come to you today in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. The first song today is one of Shelby's favorites entitled How Great Thou Art, and it's sung by Richard Epperson. Oh, 
Shelby Charles Epperson, 81 years old, formerly here of Ponca City, Oklahoma, passed away on Thursday, July the 28th, 2022, peacefully at his home and with his family. Shelby was born here in Ponca City and was one of eight children born to Shelby K. Epperson and Doris Orman Epperson. Shelby served the United States Navy and then graduated from Northern Oklahoma College. Shelby worked for 40 years in the car business in Ponca City. He also owned Shelby's used cars and also worked for Jack Belker Ford, Charlie Cannon Chevrolet, and Pemberton Chevrolet. He also owned real estate and rental property here in Ponca City for a number of years. Shelby met the love of his life, Joyce Marie Neely, in Park City, Oklahoma, and that's when the Eppersons and the Neely family came together and became one. They were married here in Park City on West Grand at that particular time, because 1966, for that's where Faith Tabernacle Church was. Shelby and Joyce raised two sons, Charlie and Danny, here in Ponca City. Shelby was a devoted husband and father. He dearly loved his family. And if you were around him any time at all, you knew that right away. He loved to attend all the boys' sporting events and never missed them. He was a man of many talents, including being a watchmaker. That's some intricate stuff to go all the way from a watchmaker to repairing houses. There's quite a vast span between those two. But Shelby's talents were many, many, many. I think Danny told me he started the watchmaking when he was in, or working on watch when he was in the Navy. The captain brought the watch to Shelby and said, this thing's broke, can you fix it? He thought, I better get this right. And so he worked meticulously on that, and he fixed the watch. And so he was on to a new hobby. Shelby enjoyed many other hobbies, including stamp collecting, coin collecting, and books of all kinds. Joyce and the boys meant everything unto Shelby, and it was evident. Shelby later became a grandpa, and his grandkids called him Papa Paul or Poppy. He was an awesome grandpa. If you don't believe it, you can just ask them kids. He loved family, and it was truly the treasure of his life. Shelby is survived by his wife of 56 years, Joyce Epperson, of the home. Also, one of the sons, Charlie, and his wife, Connie, of Springfield, Missouri. Also, Danny, and his wife, Michelle, of Republic, Missouri, his grandchildren, Emily and her husband, Jason, Ryan, Ashley, and Mia, great-grandson, Landon, also survived by one brother, Richard Epperson, and his wife, Peggy, here of Ponca City, many, many nieces, nephews, and a whole host of friends. Shelby was preceded in death by his father, Shelby K. Epperson, also his mother, Doris Orman Epperson, his sister, Laura, his brother, Homer, his sister, Doris, also his brother, David, his brother, Steve, and his brother, Bobby. The first song today that's been chosen by the family in Shanna, Santa Tago's going to sing it. It's called What a Lovely Name.
family's put together a family video today for us so that we may be able to enjoy and do some reminiscing and see some pictures. So we want you to just enjoy this. times and at least a thousand times I've rejoiced for you but the reason why I'm broken the reason why I cry is how long 
Must I wait to be with you? I close my eyes and I see your face. If home's where my heart is, then I'm out of place. Lord, won't you give me strength to make it through somehow? I've never been more homesick than now. I don't understand your ways The reason why I wonder if I'll ever know But even if you showed me The hurt would be the same Cause I'm still here So far away from home
Treasures and memories are those things that God's given unto us that are in the pictures, family, the get-togethers are things that we have that no one can take from us. Those are those things in times like this we gather up into our heart and we're glad that we have them. The problem with some of us that are a little older, they didn't have the cameras like they do today. Everybody's got a cell phone. So everybody has selfies, if nothing else. But some of the older ones, we don't have as many pictures as we wish we had. So be sure when you're together, always remember to get a lot of pictures so that you can share them. Amen. Well, Danny and Emily are going to come at this time and share some moments with us. This is going to be hard. It's all going to be okay. Those were the words that my pinball told me as he found out I was pregnant in high school. He was really all right because everything was okay. <laughs> he always knew it was really going to be okay. Grandpa was loved by so many people who met him. His charisma, his character, were loved by so many. Many have said that he was the funniest man they ever met, and I can attest to that. His jokes still play in my head. <laughs> he always knew how to make you smile. He loved cars, he loved his wife, he loved his sons, he loved his siblings, he loved his family, and he loved his grandkids more than anything in this world. We really were his world. He was proud of every single thing that we did, whether it was showing up to our ball games, our choir concerts, or our horse riding events, he was there in support. He never missed an event, and as he got older, he watched whatever he could from home. He would always say from the side, that's my Emmy girl, that's my Rai Rai, that's my Ashy, that's my Mia, or that's my Landon. He was really proud of us grandkids, and he really made us feel on top of the world. When I was a kid, I would come visit my grand and my papa back in Ponca City. He would take me all over to do fun things. He would take me to the park and feed the ducks and to play. When I was around five, I got stuck in a swing out at Lake Ponca. He was so determined to get me out of that swing that he pulled out his pocket knife and he told Granny he was going to cut me out of that swing if that was the last thing he did. He never second guessed when someone was in need. He would do anything to make sure that we were safe and that it was all okay. We can all hope to have his willingness to help others. I remember being in high school when I would go over to visit. He always told me I was welcome to eat whatever I wanted and would insist that I would get something, even if I wasn't hungry. What I would, what I would give just to have another can of Coke, some dots, and have some popcorn and watch a Western with him again. He had the most giving heart and always looked out for what others needed. He was the most selfless person I have ever met. Grant and Pampa moved to Missouri to take care of us from a young age, and I'm so glad they did. I enjoyed everything they did for us by picking us up from school. Like I said, they are the most humble and giving people that I know. He always wanted to see me graduate college. He cheered me on through every school presentation and test and exam. He told me I wouldn't expect anything less from you. My diploma came in the mail a few weeks ago from Missouri State. One of the last times I saw him before he passed, I brought it over, and he grinned ear to ear and said she did it. The last thing he told me was, I love you and I'm proud of you, and he squeezed my hand. I hope we are all making you proud, Bamball. All of us kids can speak to the fact that we enjoyed playing in the back of his red pickup. 
We'd play out there for hours at a time in the driveway. If we got lucky that day, he would let us ride in the front seat, and we would go to Dairy Queen and get a Sunday. Pampa loved the 4th of July. He loved fireworks and Grand's homemade strawberry ice cream. He loved getting to sit outside for hours and watch the fireworks go off. He loved his country, and he loved celebrating with his family. Pampa loved cars. He sold cars for many years. He wasn't your typical car salesman. He was honest, and he would tell you if something was wrong with your car. He loved cars, but, you know, only American ones and the ones without the circle around the name. <laughs> when I bought a car last summer, he looked at me and told me that that piece of car was a piece of something, something that we all know he would say. Two days later, in fact, the car did break down. He was right once again. His honesty is something that we all can hope to have in our lives. Pampa always invested in us kids. He would go out of his way to play puzzles with us, play school, play ball, or even let you fix his hair with butterfly clips. One time, I even let it, I, I fixed his hair with butterfly clips, and he went out in public with them on. When my dad asked him what was in his hair, he said some words that, again, we all know he would say. We're going to miss his investment in our lives and the time he took to make memories with us kids. Pam Paul, we love you so much. We're going to miss your laugh, your smile, your personality, your words of advice, your words of honesty, and your hugs. <laughs> Someday, I'll get to stroll all over heaven with you. I love you. Emmy, Ryan, Ashi, Mia, and Landon. It is a true honor to be able to speak on family's behalf today about our dad. Charlie and I were so blessed to have him as dad. And we're proud to carry his name. Our dad was totally in love with our mom, and the feeling was mutual. Watching them is where we learned a lot about commitment. They always took care of each other. No matter what, they were there for each other, even when things were tough. Dad's love for mom grew to another level during the last nine years when she cared for him. It was an unwavering love. Dad was definitely crazy about my brother and me. Dad and, all, Dad and mom always included us in their outings, including a thing he called riding. Riding consists of us piling into the family car and driving all over town with dad and mom, talked about where they met, their first date, their first home, and so on. Charlie and I would just sit in the back seat and find ways to slightly irritate him. There were no mobile phones to talk on or internet to surf, just the four of us trapped. <laughs> it was the best. And he, Dad loved to watch my brother and I play sports of all kinds. He always came to our games, and he supported us in all that we did. He always cheered us on, but, with a slight, but he was a slight bit quieter than my mom. Dad enjoyed this all over again, watching his grandkids play. He loved his grand much, grandkids so much and enjoyed spending time playing games, coloring, and playing school. Dad became a great grandfather three years ago, and he was ecstatic. He loved having all the kids over for family dinner. We have so many great stories we could share, but we'll stick to one of the best. The Neely Bunch decided the entire family would take on the Illinois River in a relaxing canoe trip. Charlie quickly teamed up with another family member to avoid what was sure to be chaos. I was, of course, elected to ride in the middle of mom and dad. <laughs> the canoe instructor was going all over the equipment and operating instructions, and I noticed that dad wasn't paying attention. I encouraged dad to listen to the instructor, but he said, I got this. I was in the Navy. 
Do you know when you talk out loud unintentionally? Well, I did. I said, what does being in the Navy have to do with canoeing? <laughs> After he gave me some colorful words of encouragement, we were off. The canoe instructor told us not to go to the left side of the river when we launched, and we decided to challenge the wisdom of the instructor. <laughs> anyway, we were two minutes into this and trouble was brewing. Dad was telling Mom that she was working against him and I was yelling jump. <laughs> Somehow we made it through that part of the river, but the fun was just beginning. The family decided to pull over for a picnic, lunch at some point in the float. Each canoe turned right into a small arm of the river and poured, pulled into the shore except for us. Dad and Mom could not navigate the turn. <laughs> And down the river we went, looking back at the family in defeat. <laughs> a few of the family members came to the rescue and brought us to shore. For some reason, Dad decided to step back on the very end of the canoe, and there he went. A perfect backflip with a little splash. He came out of the water with his aviator glasses on the end of his nose, and without hesitation, I left the scene. I forgot to mention he was wearing a polo shirt and starched jeans. We laughed until we cried. Family was everything to my dad. He loved his parents and his siblings and we saw it firsthand as he helped take care of his own dad in his final years. He, not just, he just did not tell family he loved him. His actions proved it. He loved his sister and brothers and played the role of big brother well. Dad loved mom's family like his own and enjoyed spending holidays with them. During the last few years, dad became mom's prayer partner, which was a huge blessing for our family. The power of prayer is real and dad's life was proof. We are so thankful for all the amazing years the Lord shared dad with us and look forward to the day we see him again. Jesus promises of this in the book of John Chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Let not your heart be troubled. Yea, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Jesus forever changed the world on a hill called Calvary. And that is the reason why today's goodbye is just temporary. Dad, thanks for everything. We love you and we'll take good care of mom.
I want to share with you from Shelby's favorite scripture. I'm sure you probably know this scripture. It's one of the most noted in the Old Testament there is. In the Hebrew, when it was sung by David, who was the shepherd, it is called a Yadah, which means that it's confessional. And that David began to sing unto the Lord and began to confess what the Lord meant unto him. Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Truly, that's the hope of the believer. As David knew and he began to sing unto the Lord as he was watching his father Jethro's sheep in the sheep pasture round about in Israel when he was young. I know that Shelby began to draw close, even closer in his latter years unto the Lord and I thought about, I just got to see what this guy's name means. I believe in names, and I believe names are, speak volumes into our life. I believe many times they're prophetic, even though parents sometimes don't know. There's an unction when they give a child a name. So Shelby's name means from the estate. Now, if you've got an estate, you're doing pretty good. That's better than being poor, is you have an estate. And the larger the state, the greater it is, right? And the spiritual connotation is a faithful steward. And truly he was. In 1 Corinthians 4 and 2 it says, Now in this way, those who are trusted with something valuable, those that are trusted with something valuable, and truly this man this family man, Shelby Epperson, was trusted with something that was valuable. I don't think that he even realized growing up how valuable the gifts and the talents that were placed within him that he had. And it goes on, Paul says that it must be found trustworthy. And Shelby walked this out in his life, for he was a trustworthy man. With the many gifts and the talents that God had given unto him. I looked up his name in another book and it meant Little Rock. And I don't mean Arkansas either. Okay? It's talking about out of Psalms 92 and 5 where it says, The Lord is upright and he is my rock, my shelter, and my help in the time of trouble. His middle name, Charles, means manly. The spiritual connotation is valiant, and it's out of Joshua 1 and 9. Be strong and of good courage, and do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. Here's what for. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I don't think sometimes as he was growing up, he realized how much the Lord was with him and watched out for him and took care of him. Charles, man of God. Man of God. And this is the connotation of really what his name means. As Joshua said, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Even sometimes when we don't recognize it or understand it. But as Psalm 73 and 28 says, I have put my trust in the Lord God. And fully, the calling and the prophecies that are upon Shelby's name and all the prayers that were prayed for him came to pass and were fulfilled in the latter years of his life. 
Shelby Charles Epperson's life is a result of many prayers and people that loved him and a family that loved him. Amen. And he fulfilled that man of God. Shelby's favorite scripture, as I said, is the 23rd Psalm. And David, as he was beginning to be the shepherd and taking care of his father's sheep, David had an intense personal relationship when he was in the field with the Heavenly Father. David understood the importance of responsibility and taking care even of someone else's flock. And I believe Shelby could relate to David's psalm because he was always looking out and taking care of someone else. He may not have been the loudest one in the family. If you grew up around the Neelys, you know that there was a lot of cackling and a lot of fun. As they would get together and we'd, even in church would have a lot of fun. I knew Joycey long before I met Shelby. And it was always a hoot. That's all I'll say. <laughs> but truly, Shelby's a family man from the very start. As Danny said, even when he was young, he was always reaching out and wanting to help his own family because family was number one to him. You know, tending sheep's hard work. David found that out. Shelby was not afraid of work. Whatever that needed to be done, he would always do it. He was a man of many, many talents and many, many accomplishments in his life. The first half of Psalms 23 describes God's provision in Psalms 1 through 3. And the second half describes God's protection. And Shelby understood the importance of provision, for he was always a hard worker, working many hours that was there. If you go by the dealership or something, he was there. If he knew that you were interested, he'd be there. And he knew what protection was as he watched over his flock and took care of them. It was David who knew the sheep had needed endless attention and constant provision and, yes, rest, that he made them to lie down in the green verdant pastures beside the still waters that was there. Shelby understood, I believe, that all of these things when it came to his personal life, and that's the reason that this was his favorite scripture. His attention was on his family, giving that attention unto them as Danny said that he would go to their games or whatever was needed with the family. He had time, he took time. He instilled confidence in the family as we visited the other night, teaching them that they could do anything and they could be anything that they wanted to be. Life is a blank canvas, and all you got to do is paint the picture of what you desire to be in life. Shelby was a good businessman. He was a trustful man. He was an honest man. He was a truthful man, and that's hard to find in a car salesman. And so that's saying a lot, but I knew that when I went and talked with him, as it was mentioned that if there was a problem with the vehicle, he would tell you the problem that there was, that it needed to be fixed. I bought my first new car from him and at 118 South 2nd in Polk City, Oklahoma, Jack Bowker Ford. It was sitting on the showroom floor they don't make them anymore, but that was a great little car. It's a 1970 Maverick. We thought that was the greatest car that ever was. Shelby made sure we got a good deal. Joyce said he kept all of the contracts of the people that he sold cars with. They found out when they was going through things, he still had them. That's because he cared. He cared. Then about my second car from him, we had family and it was growing and needed more room, so we had to have a station wagon. So we had to go see Shelby again and we bought a Ford station wagon because he sold Fords at that time. Last car I bought from him, though he had moved up to Chevy, 
and even all the way on the north side of town with Pemberton at that time, and so I bought a new Chevy pickup from him. Shelby was always, always would take care of you. I think one word I asked them, what's the one word you think that would describe Shelby? And of course, it was one of the grandkids had to speak up, and she said, selfless. Selfless. He was always taking care of us and his family. David saw that the sheep needed leading and they needed guiding. And so, as he said, he restores my soul. And even though we walk through hard places many times, as the shepherd said, through valleys of shadow, even of death, he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's always there. He's a constant friend, a friend that will share life with you. A constant friend is not just one that sticks closer than a brother sometimes, but he's one that will share life with you, whatever you need, and show up at the events or the things. And I love this, the part that said he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemy. As Lou Giglio says, don't get the devil a seat at your table. It's okay for the enemy to sit over there and watch, but don't let him close enough to sit down at your table. Just let him watch because he sees that you've been blessed and the Lord has taken care of you. And truly, the Lord took care of Shelby and his family. He anoints my head with oil, and I thought about this passage of Scripture. This means that you have favor when your head is anointed and the anointing is upon your life, and truly, the anointing was upon Shelby, even though he was, as I said, the quiet one. I don't know why that just sticks in my head, but it's there. But that's the benefit of the covenant. The goodness and the mercy of God will follow you all the days of your life. I love what one translation that says, your beauty and your love chases after me. Your beauty and your love chases after me. And we all live and will live in his house forever. You know, he's the God of heroic grace and forgiveness. He restores my soul. Shelby was good at restoring things. He understood that no matter what it was. Shelby, was, when he was a young boy, it was shared with me that he and his mother Doris would sit down and it's been a while ago, it's when TVs were black and white. And they had them ears up there called rabbit ears is the way that you got that. But he would watch with his mother Doris the Billy Graham Crusades on TV and he loved to sit and watch the Billy Graham TV. I don't know whether he recognized it or not, but even at that I believe the Lord was restoring his soul. He knew who he was called to be because of what his name was. And the Lord had favor upon him. And his name began to speak and the connotations that it was. And so all of these things began to be put in order. And all of a sudden fulfillment came to pass in his life. When it came time to pray, it was always Joyce that needed to pray. And he had to say, pray. And he'd grab her hand and she'd pray. Because if you've ever been around prayer, you know that Joseph knows how to pray. But it got to where he'd even pray with her. And truly, I thought about that. And, you know, I may be standing still up here, but I'm jumping up and down on the inside, as they say in old people's church, because the fulfillment of the power of the spoken word of the family prayers, the grandchildren's prayers, and all of those things that were spoken over his life, even his name every time that they called Shelby Epperson. It had a meaning, and that meaning was spoken, and the word always comes to pass. And so, in the latter part, as he came to the Lord, and I love the story that Danny said that they had a lady that helped them she was a Spanish lady and didn't even speak English. But she had 
as many of them that helped take care of Shelby at the last, they were drawn to him because there was something about him that you knew, amen, that he was that friend. And so she brought her little daughter or granddaughter or whoever it was that could speak English and she came back to their house and the lady would speak in Spanish and the little girl would interpret and she made sure that she knew that Shelby knew the Lord and repeated the sinner's prayer with her and that thrilled him that thrilled him why because of the love and the care amen it says a small child will lead them and so not only was it the children inside the family but it's also someone else's child outside the family that saw and was drawn unto Shelby because he truly was a family man. Let us pray. Father, I'm so thankful for I've known and I know one of these days, Lord, that I'll see my brother again. Thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd and our friend. Your mercies, Lord, cannot be numbered. Many times we don't even understand or think about the work behind the scene or the words that are spoken and the prayers that are prayed. But we will always remember this brother. We thank you, Lord, for this selfless family man who loved his family so greatly. He may not have spoke about it much, but he sure lived it. Thank you for the life that you've given unto him and to this family. And for the privilege for allowing us to have known him. Lord, in your boundless compassion today, Father, I ask you to console all of these, Lord, that mourn. And let them see your love and your grace and your mercy in this time. Lord, put your arms around them and draw them close unto you and strengthen them. We thank you, Lord, that Shelby lives on. And Danny and Charlie and all of the children, the grandchildren that will come after as they hear the stories and they see the pictures as they begin to grow up. Father, we thank you for generations. We thank you for a family that's strong in faith and in value on both sides, Shelby's side and Joyce's side. We thank you for a love that is stronger than death. So we give you praise today, Lord, as we celebrate the life of this family, man, and friend. We ask you to walk with them. Lord, and be close unto them. But let them know that you've answered the prayers, Lord. And because you live, he lives also with you today and we give you praise for it in Jesus name amen amen well this family loves singing and so we're going to go out today with a song called I'll fly away fly away Yeah. Okay.
Today is founded upon the rock. Amen. And to know that this rock, amen, shall be Epperson. Amen. This family man, this man of God, has a legacy and he's passed it on. Amen. <laughs> 